with the critical situation that our planet is in uh, as North America uh, experiences what they call a heat dome. Uh, Siberia is experiencing a heat dome of temperatures uh, centigrade of 40, 50, 55 degrees. Uh, that's 110, 20, 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, simultaneously uh, in the Southern hemisphere, uh, in Argentina and Brazil, uh, Chile, they're experiencing record-breaking cold. It's uh, winter uh, in the Southern hemisphere. Uh, there's even a cyclone that's appearing off the coast of Brazil uh, that uh, has never been uh, seen before uh, during the month of, uh, of June. Uh, so uh, the world is, uh, is really struggling. Uh, and uh, one of the facts that's emerging about the accumulating number of deaths that are occurring in North America uh, is drawn from research that they did back in 2003, if you remember when a massive heat wave swept over Europe and tens of thousands of people died. Uh, in Paris and Madrid and Rome and London. And what they discovered is that one of the reasons why that happened uh, is because the trees in the cities and surrounding the cities inverted at high temperatures above about 40, uh, 45 degrees centigrade. Uh, the trees stop emitting oxygen. They contract and they emit carbon dioxide. And so that's what was killing so many people, particularly the elderly and the infirm, is they couldn't get enough oxygen. Uh, and that same situation is now beginning to take shape, particularly over Canada uh, and parts of the, the central west of the uh, United States. Um, so I just wanted, as we open today, to be uh, cognizant um, that uh, there are people uh, in the human humanity rising community uh, that right now are suffering uh, uh, starkly as temperatures rise to uh, unbearable levels for human uh, existence. It's also the best of times. Uh, today, uh, uh, we are going to celebrate uh, the 90th birthday of Stan Groff, uh, one of the great uh, uh, world treasures of our time. Uh, and as you all know, we've been celebrating Stan since January as one day every month we brought people uh, from his life and his career and his family uh, to um, really salute and acknowledge uh, one of the great uh, intelligences, one of the great souls um, of our time. Uh, so we'll be dedicating our program uh, to those aspects in our very complicated existence right now that remind us of the nobility of what it means uh, to be human. But let us start, as we always do, uh, with a, just a moment, uh, just to pause, gather ourselves, maybe take a deep breath, and gather yourself in your body. Close your eyes and place your attention on your heart. And for the next minute or so, attune yourself with your heartbeat in a spirit of gratitude and deep thanksgiving that you're alive. We're all alive at this most extraordinary moment in the human journey.
Thank you, everyone. And now with an open heart and a heart full of gratitude and love for each and every one of you who are joining our session today, I want to commence our program by emphasizing the importance of contemplating our human potential in times such as ours when turbulence abounds, uh, the pandemic is still with us. It's very important to pause and celebrate life as we know it. And in this particular case, to celebrate a single life that has exemplified the virtues that all of us admire uh, and has demonstrated the capacity to live the good life over time. It's one thing to have an episode of excellence and then to succumb to mediocrity. It's a completely different thing to sustain excellence, compassion, creativity, and innovation at the frontiers of human consciousness for 90 years. So today we we're celebrating the 90th birthday of Stan Groff. And I just wanna say uh, to all of you as someone who's had the privilege of knowing Stan, I believe we met uh, in 1985 uh, as a man that I've admired and loved uh, from the day I met him. And so to be able to mobilize Ubiquity University and Humanity Rising to celebrate this great soul gives me intense uh, pleasure. And I would like to now introduce uh, Susan Hess Loger. You all know, award-winning director and producer uh, who uh, uh, really was the instigator uh, of this celebration, uh, having done a documentary film on, on Stan, the, the Voyage of the Psychonaut. Uh, so I really wanna thank uh, uh, Susan uh, for everything she's done month by month uh, to pull these sessions together uh, in this tribute uh, to a great soul. Susan, welcome. And thank you. Thank you very much for all you've done. Oh, Jim, I, I want to thank you. This has really been an amazing opportunity. It was seven years that I spent working with Stan and his wife, Brigitte, to create this documentary, The Way of the Psychonaut. But it was really during the six monthly um, tributes that I had a chance to learn so much more because Stan and Brigitte both, um, it was a dialogue actually between many of the visionaries that were part of our documentary. Uh, they joined us for these sessions. And, um, and so it's just a, an amazing opportunity to get even more information out to the general public and for myself. So I thank you. And I just want to tell everybody who's joining us today that you can find the movie, The Way of the Psychonaut, through the website of the same name, thewayofthepsychonaut.com. And I've also put together um, a series of links that will bring people to each of the sessions that we recorded with Humanity Rising. So they're direct links to all of those sessions on our landing page. And you can also find Stan's book, The Way of the Psychonaut, Volumes 1 and 2, which is an amazing uh, culmination of all of his research and, and discoveries over the course of his 60 plus year career. And so, but today is different. Um, this fall, of course, there'll be something called a, if I can pronounce it correctly, a best shrift. Uh, or a collection of essays from some remarkable scholars and visionaries across a scope of perspectives that it will be honoring Stan. But today our focus is on Stan, a more personal tribute from two people who know him and love him. Uh, his brother Paul, who reflects on their long and loving relationship, and Brigitte, Stan's wife. And she will share stories and photos from their 30-year um, 35 year relationship that has culminated in marriage some six years ago. So I don't want to waste any more time and say welcome Stan and Brigitte. It's so lovely to see you here today. Well, thank you very much, uh, Jim and Susan and uh, 
Rick and, and uh, Matt, you have really ongoing uh, celebration, you know, since the, the 1st of uh, January until now, this is the day of the birthday. And uh, I came in a great mood today. We had a wonderful, wonderful day, um, uh, beautiful massage. And then uh, this, I knew that I was coming now with, with Paul and, and uh, Brigitte, who certainly are you know, the closest people in, in this world for, for me. So I was very excited. And then on top of it, uh, I found out that two of them in secret, they created this amazing uh, book that I didn't know about. And uh, I'm almost difficult to go away from it uh, and, and read. Um, you want to show it? Uh, I know. Um, maybe would you like to show it? Yeah, oh, yeah I can see. Is that it. okay? Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. It's in Germany at this point because my great friends in Switzerland, uh, Schacknatten uh, Verlag, Nach uh, okay. created also, uh, you know, in, in basically in their own. Uh, in their own, own amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's so a, she says that it's going to happen in some other uh, translation. In as all well. languages, we want this, and and it's. Uh, I I have to say this is an interview I did with Stan about his his work and life. I mean his life's work, and so for the sixty years of LSD research, how he started and how he where he is now. So this is the only time this is really written that way. And uh, he really loves that interview and was his deepest wish to have it published. So, so I, I just thought, let's do it, you know. And uh, he also likes the, the combination with the foreword. He was writing for Albert Hoffman's uh, uh, LSD, My Problem Child. So I put them both together and I added a lot of photos and uh, of Stan and, uh, you know, and uh, of us and of, of the travels and, and uh, seminars. And I, I invited all, our, all his friends and co-travelers to write the beautiful birthday wishes from their hearts. And they all did that. And also, since this is a German speaking edition, our German teachers and friends. Uh, and so, so it's really, it's a total treasure. And he's so in, you're so in love with this book, aren't you? So. And Susan, in a way, it's actually a continuation of what you have been doing to, in the uh, film. Mm -hmm. And then you this um, uh, interviews, you know, with these people who were, who were uh, always in the, in the film, mm -hmm. and now uh, in this in this book that that uh, Paul and uh, and Brigitte and, and my friends from from Switzerland mm -hmm. uh, created, uh, they had at least uh, uh, one page or two of all these uh, translational transpersonal friends. Uh, it's so it's just an amazing. We're just so happy. Thank you so much again, Paul, for for helping create this book and for from Roger, Markus, um, Chris, and uh, Jutta, Nina, Agnes from Nachtschatten Verlag. You really this this book is made of love. I have to say, I I called them and said would you like to help me with this book? And they said, yes, you know, and they didn't have any time and they do this for free. And we worked day and night and within two months, we created this incredible book and it's really out of love for Stan. And, and it's always a lot of secret, you know, I, I, I never knew what was, was happening. It was very hard not to tell him because we don't have any secrets, but I always wanted to find out what he wants, you know, so. And so it was just so, I'm so happy it's there now today. And we, we really want this in all the languages to go around the world because that's his really who he is. So anyway, so I, I will do now, you know, what I always did in this uh, every month uh, uh, for people who have not uh, heard this, that uh, about two and a half years ago, I had a stroke. Mm -hmm. Uh, I didn't uh, had paralysis, you know. I I think I didn't uh, damage my my uh, mind, uh, but certainly damaged very much my my uh, speech. Mm -hmm. And so um, you will see that at some point I might be struggling for for words. And it's uh, great that uh, 
Brigitte is here and uh, you know she knows she will know as much of the things that I will be talking about and she will she will help me. I so would, thank you, thank you much. I would also share before we do our program, share a story from this morning. I was singing to Stan, happy birthday to you, you know, was singing, and he was singing too. He was singing happy birthday to you. And I said, Well, but this is your birthday. And he said, No, this is our birthday. And I said, well, why is this our birthday? You want to say what? If experience like one soul, you know, so we're really we are two, that's 45. We are two parts, we are two parts of one soul. This is why it's also my birthday. And then I said, Oh, this is great, you know. So we're each 45 years old. <laughs> Anyway, together is ninety. So that was the start in the morning. So unfortunately, I guess you know, with so much great uh, mood, and then I overheard what what Jim said. What what suddenly is happening? You know, mm -hmm. worse than it was before, and it's very difficult to celebrate for that. Well, uh, you know, Stan, I think you bring into the public realm the idea of transpersonal dimensional consciousness. Mm -hmm. And if anything's going to save us, that's it. So mm -hmm. I am very grateful because the deep inner work through whether it's holotropic breath work or psychedelic experiences, we have the opportunity to encounter ourselves as spirit. And I think that's, you know, a really important thing for humanity to be considering right now is, is that. So, um, but let's let's focus on you today. And and so I'm going to introduce your brother, um, Paul, because he's going to first share um, some stories and images from your growing up together. And so Paul Groff, Stan's brother, is a Canadian research psychiatrist, clinician and administrator. Dr. Groff has been involved in transpersonal activities since 1962 and utilized holotropic breathwork with major depressions and bipolar disorders. Presently, he is a professor of psychiatry at the University of Toronto and director of Ottawa Mood Disorders Center. He's also authored and co-authored over 500 publications and three books. Welcome, Paul, and I'm turning it over to you. Well, I have to share, I guess. I mean, <laughs> let, me start the, let me start the... The, the video, the slides. Is it there? Yeah, we can see it, Paul. Looks good. Okay. Well, Stan. I'm just delighted to be among the first ones to wish you a very happy birthday. And of course, looking at the situation, I mean, you've just completed a magnus opus a few years ago, the, the way of the psychonaut. You've, um, with Brigitte, you just really restructured your, your program and created the growth legacy. Um, you are having very happy years with Brigitte. So the only thing I can really wish you and wish us is of course, many happy, healthy years to come. And that, that's uh, the only thing I would really want from, from the bottom of my heart. You've been such a special, wonderful brother and teacher, generous, giving, uh, open, uh, so it's, it's been wonderful. And if, uh, after I leave this body, if, if I have some say in, uh, what should be happening in the next life, I'm, I'm ask, I'm going to ask for you again. I hope you excuse me. Um, well, now I guess my task is to cover almost 85 years in the next uh, 15 or so minutes. So all I can do is, I guess, show a, a few bits and pieces of, of um, our life together. 
I think I should say a few words about, about my parents because they, they have played a very important role in this. Uh, father uh, really was a self-made man. He came from 11 children. It's a big family. They lived uh, near a railway station. At the beginning of 20th century, I guess, railway and air airplanes was where what, what internet is these days. And so the whole family, most of the family was really employed on one or the other. And uh, uh, so that's, and of course, coming out of this family, father had to make his own life. He, he became a chemist, engineer, a business executive. And mother was a concert pianist and quite accomplished in her childhood, actually quite accomplished painter as well. But unfortunately, because of two of us, I think she had very little time to, to, to perform, although she did. Um, I often have my clients or patients complaining about the vicissitudes and the difficulties of life. And I kind of chuckle inside when I, when I think about it, when I think about the parents living through two world wars, living through a pandemia that killed about 50, 60 million people, living through Nazis, Russians, communism, and still managing to, to bring us up. And uh, they have been very loving, caring parents. And, you know, I've, throughout my life, I've now, some of my patients, of course, are uh, not particularly young. And so I, uh, I can see how the first years of life, the, the love, the caring, really determines your, your image of the universe very very heavily, so I'm very grateful for that. So uh, let me see if I can get the slides going. This is, I guess, where it started. Uh, parents getting married in the 1920s. Uh, there's an interesting story about, about this. Uh, father, I guess uh, it's been tradition in his family and we followed it that the people eventually ch choose their religion if they want some. So he, he did, did not have any religion and, and, and this was a Catholic church. And of course the, the Catholic church was not willing to let him in and it was important to do it because grandfather's um, small department store was just across the street. They just walked from the church across the street on the red carpets to to the grandfather's store. So grandfather, uh, I guess money has always played an important role in the Catholic church. So for, for a sufficient amount of money, father was allowed to marry in the, in the Catholic church. And uh, so- Actually develop our relationship to religion, yeah? Yes. Both you and I, yeah. Yeah, they, we both had a, had then an option, we were not, I, I don't think we were christened as far as I know. And we had a choice then to choose our religions, which <laughs> sometimes took a long time to figure out. Now, uh, just a few pictures from, from uh, our childhood. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is a particularly interesting story because in, uh, in Central Europe, uh, there is a custom around Easter time, and it has something to do, obviously, with the old fertility rites. The mm -hmm. boys have to go out, and they have these uh, special kind of ropes, kind of whipping or lashing ropes, and they are supposed to uh, threaten the girls that unless they give them a nice, very nice colored eggs, they, they will get beaten. So that's, that's, uh, so the mother dressed us up as, and took us, took us out. Well, I think another interesting thing was, of course, uh, there were photographs, you know, around, but when we were supposed to get a uh, film, it was always into a studio. It was not uh, that is today, then it's a lot of uh, 
cameras, That's right. you know, and you can just uh, bring hundreds of them and choose the best one. Whereas this was that you had to prepare really a special one into a studio. So we we're not very like because we had to be, you know, <laughs> close properly for that. Yes, yeah. Well, uh, I guess there was a period when mother thought that she really should have had a son and a daughter, and I guess I was the least resistant person to, do, <laughs> to become the, the daughter in the family. And, uh, but you so, don't look very happy, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Not a happy girl. <laughs> well, uh, I, there were some challenges, of course, over those years. I think probably the, the the worst year was when when I had a polio, and shortly after I came out from the hospital, about four months later, the uh, secret police appeared in the in the apartment and just ransacked it completely, all the way, and uh, of course arrested Stan for alleged uh, you know uh, anti-communist activities. And uh, the funny part was when I was in the hospital, I, I, I got connected with one young man who really turned me on to, on to Engels philosophy. And so I bought several of the Engels books and they were all published by the communists. They had big, big red, red uh, five uh, pointed star on it. And that was sitting on my desk. So of the old apartment that was completely ransacked, they did not, the agent did not dare to touch my desk where there was these books with five, uh, five pointed red, red stars. And there was mother's uh, private correspondence with some spiritual teachers. And that would have been a prob huge problem because you can imagine what, what the secret police would uh, read behind stories about uh, kind of spiritual matters they would thought they would they would have thought that this was some some kind of codes we were looking for the left lane yeah 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 looking so uh it it's a miracle i think uh, that we both managed to one one after the other get to the medical school in the in the communist regime stan was of course kicked out of the of the gymnasium of the of the of the high school as undesirable and had was transferred to another school that was considered kind of better politically oriented the interesting tidbit is that uh, it was school on so called well, londinska london street in prague where he was actually born there was also an obstetrics besides the the, the school across the street yeah. and yeah and uh you know there there are i think it's hard to believe but in in a way everything is possible in in the in the authoritarian authoritarian regimes like communist regimes if you know the ways what happened was uh, the um the director of the school where stan was trans transferred had a heart attack and so nobody opened the, obviously for a long time, nobody opened the papers that came with Stan. So they did not know that he was kicked out of school and he, he had, of course, outstanding marks. So they recommended him to, to, to medical school and there were other, other reasons for their support. And this, this whole story about the jail only came out when Stan was already in, in the medical school for about, I don't know, nine months, a year. And of course, it would have been tremendous embarrassment for the dean to find out that he, so they had to let, let him study and, and continue. So that was a quite, quite an amazing story. Now, when Stan went to jail, uh, he asked, they were allowed to have two books and, and he asked mother for an English dictionary because he wanted to learn English and for Shakespeare's collected works. I don't know where, where we got them at that time. Now, this, this had a, a lot of interesting implications later because in the 60s, the 
uh, travel, at least for the Westerners, to, to the communist country, to, certainly to Czechoslovakia, opened up. And the Americans uh, particularly started coming and visiting the, the research institute where we were. And so there were a number of leading Americans. I remember Nathan Klein from New York. I remember Abe Hoffer came from Saskatchewan, Virginia Satir, a number of others. And so Stan, <laughs> with his uh, knowledge of English acquired in jail from Shakespeare, was, was uh, the guide of, 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 of these people. And <laughs> they were always, of course, Prague has a lot of, lot of antiques, and there's a lot of connection with Shakespeare, uh, various uh, statues and, 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 and scenes, because Shakespeare's uh, works is, and the, 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 the drama is, is very well known. And so Stan was, was guiding these people across Prague, and they were absolutely flabbergasted, this, this guy talking kind of a partly medieval English and giving them these ex explanations about all kinds of medieval, medieval arms, you know, all these medieval helms and all the expressions of, of how do you unsheath the sword and, and the hala partners and all, all, all the medieval, medieval uh, equipment of so they were absolutely puzzled where, where, he, where the Czech was never outside of the country, how he talked about these, these medieval British things. And uh, there were the, the, the other story I, I remember vividly was that the, the young girls were, the, the Americans often brought their family. And, and so several young girls came, came, daughters and friends of daughters came, came with them. And they were um, quite uh, embarrassed at times because there was a big um, powder tower that uh, in, in Prague. And there was a story from medieval times that you, if you were a virgin, you had to see all the five kingfishers. Now the trick was, that the fifth kingfisher was actually hidden on the on the rear of the tower, so it caused caused kind of embarrassment for for the young girls that they could not figure out the the, the five kingfisher. Um, so lot, lots of lot of kind of interesting stories that um, uh, come back. Now, the other thing I could say briefly, if I manage. Yeah, Stan always played a role of, of, of savior of his, of, his, of his younger brother. And there was uh, quite a few stories about that. One that stands uh, up in my mind is, uh, this was during the war, must have been 1942, 43. There was uh, good skiing in Prague uh, on the outskirts. And so we went to ski. And there were also, Nazi soldiers skiing all the way to the top of, of, of uh, the slope. And, what, and they had these uh, special war skis with very sharp tips, metal tips. And one of them lost, you can imagine what happened, lost one of these skis and it came with a huge speed down the hill where we were, when I was sitting actually, I think on the sled. And hit my hit my left knee. It was a really huge wound, and uh, so everybody was uh, all the blood coming, and uh, everybody was shocked. But Stan immediately got some tex textile and managed to bandage it and get me on the sled and, and get me home. And we had we used to have some very special ointment. It was from one of the natural. Hero, healers who was also he was a sculptor, very very interesting spiritual man, and he created some particular ointment from uh, when you looked at it, looked you you could see primarily the honey and the butter and things like that, but it had amazing healing effects. We never figured out what was in it, so that saved my that also helped my my knee, 
And that connects me with another story when uh, uh, I, uh, how did it go? I think we went, uh, played some games and uh, on the street that had a lot of kind of uh, cold sand on, on, the, on the floor <laughs> when I fell in one of the one of the plays, uh, I, I fell on my left face, and when I got up, of course, all the the the, the, the cold stuff was right. Uh, the cold dust was under my skin. So Stan managed quickly get me home and again use this this particular uh, miraculous ointment to to heal me. Uh, the the major of course, uh, saving action was when uh, in 1948, there were four months where a window opened in the Iron Curtain and it, it was possible to, to get out. And Stan invited me, he was in the States and invited me to come to visit him in the States. And uh, <clears throat> I, I, I loved Prague, and uh, I, I never imagined that, that that I would immigrate. Plus, it's it's hard to imagine. <clears throat> I would not believe if people told me. But after 20, 25 years in information in isolation, you can get very, very uh, brainwashed. <clears throat> and I had the idea that I would never survive in the West. That I, based on the, on the communist propaganda that I would have ended up uh, my life just washing dishes somewhere. So I just <laughs> came for a visit and uh, as assumed that I would go back, the, you know, the Iron Curtain would eventually close and we would never see each other. But uh, it worked out differently and 52, 53 years later, we are still on the same, well, <laughs> not right now actually, but I am still on the, on, on the American side of, 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 of the Atlantic. We had a wonderful time in, in Baltimore. Uh, oh, there's still a little bit. Oh yes, here is the spring of us. So uh, not the best picture, not the most representative picture. What really was fascinating was this Maryland Psychiatric Research Institute. Fabulous building that was built specifically for, for psychedelic psychedelic research. And it, there was a wonderful group of people. I've, I've never ha ever seen a better team. The people were spending all weekends together. They just did not have enough to just work together. They, they, they wanted and partied. Walter Penke, Walter Penke, yeah. Sandy Unger, yeah. Charles Savage. Yeah, Richards, yeah. And John Lilly. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful group. Yeah, yeah, Bill Richards and, and, and Ilse, Ilse Richards. And this was an amazing institute built specifically for their design. So my recollection is on the, first on the fourth floor, there was uh, animal laboratories for animal experiments, animal pharmacology. Pharmacology, yeah. yeah but the, the third floor, I think, was was biochemistry of, of psychedelics. The second floor uh, were wonderful, beautiful uh, rooms just set up for the sessions, for the psychedelic sessions. And there was there was a lot of it, studies with addicts, alcoholics, uh, end of life distress, and so on. The first floor, I think, was uh, the offices and uh, large lecture hall. And in the basement, there was a number of <clears throat> equipments that would produce non ordinary states of consciousness naturally. So there was the medieval witch's cradle, there was, uh, there was isolation tank, there was... Uh, the full, full one, yeah? Yeah, full one, yeah. It was just, just wonderfully equipped. And um, unfortunately, shortly after the Nixon went after the psychedelics and uh, things were uh, stopped. Uh, the Institute also was uh, turned over. In 1977, 78, when I worked in Washington nearby, 
I went, I was invited to, to visit. I was so disappointed. It was a, in my opinion, kind of a third class research institute for schizophrenia, which of course is a bunch of, it's a, it's a collection of, of problems, you, how, how you can research it. And uh, John, uh, John Tank was in the uh, 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 potatoes, you know, held in the potatoes. I don't know. Yeah. But if, if somebody has a little bit of sense now and, and keeps in mind the renaissance of, 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 of psychedelics, it would be a wonderful idea to bring it back to the, to the original purpose for which it was wonderfully set up. And you would have a, a situation set up for, for perfect integrated research. Well, um, we all, Stan and I always have a lot of fun and I don't think I have time to really cover much of it. This is one story near, of, near Baltimore when we, shortly after we found out that we were both sentenced in Prague, our, our mother wrote us, we decided that uh, we should actually prove that we are carrying out the, the, the punishment. So we got this picture and sent it to Prague to, 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 the, to the police so that they know we, we are really being punished. We had some other funny times. This is a, a heaven and hell uh, party and one of the many parties at, at Stan's house in, in, in Mill Valley. Transper transpersonal friends, yeah. Transpers all kinds of transpersonal friends who have full un understanding of, of fun and, and symbolism. Um, Stan and I also were fortunate, or I was fortunate to travel with, with, with uh, Stan to, to different places. Uh, we were to New York together. We were... Uh, this was Narsat, yeah? Was it? Uh... Yeah, yeah. yeah. We we're I, not talking about it yeah. No, that, that's when I received the award. This was when Stan received the award from President Havel in, in, in Prague. But uh, we were, since things opened up, we were there together a couple of times, I think. This is another opportunity with Stan and Brigitte when he organized the Transpersonal, International Transpersonal Association meeting uh, of four of us and uh, I have wonderful memories with it uh, Sierra Nevada horseback riding wonderful wonderful trips just a few bits and pieces and uh, we are in China there were some amazing synchronicities <laughs> the first synchronicity was was uh, Stan uh, called me and said listen it wouldn't be we uh, he had so many thoughts and uh, fantasies about China. Wouldn't it be interesting to visit China? And uh, there are all kinds of trips. I said, yes. Two weeks ago, <laughs> an invitation came to, to come and uh, teach holotropic breathwork in China. It's just, just, and, and the synchronicity is just considered. I think you wrote them up some, didn't they? Some of the, the Chinese synchronicities. That was incredible what was, what was happening there. Um, we were together in Switzerland at his publisher, we were, and we were together in Mexico. There was a uh, World Congress of Psychiatry, and uh, we, we went together. After that, we rented a car and went to, uh, to Yucatan, primarily, because of with all... An open car with our uh, luggage. We didn't know <laughs> yeah. what we were doing yet. <laughs> oh, there were interesting things. The, the the you know what the problems are with the tourists they stole they stole our windshield wipers and they came the next morning not knowing and wanted to sell it sell it sell it to us not knowing that they stole it from the same car. Well, we we had uh, interesting time of course in the historical places in Tulum, Chichen Itza, Palenque. Uh, I have a very vivid memory of Stan going into, into one of the temples in, in uh, Palenque and, and decided to go into a very deep 
meditation and he started <laughs> started experiencing experiencing going back into the history of the place and of course as you know there were the all these uh, sacrifices blood blood sacrifices and so as as in his, his mind he he traveled very he suddenly became convinced that he, he actually is not going to get life a life out of that that is going to be really sacrificed that was the reason why he came and then he opened his eyes and noticed that he was covered with these big big mexican ants that were biting him poor fellow paid for it for the next two days of course uh so he he, he was in a way sacrificed but not not the way the mexicans did it um we had a wonderful time in San Francisco several times. The most power, the most memorable one was uh, three, about three years ago Then the University of San Francisco has arranged uh, several days of uh, gathering uh, in terms of celebrating Stan's life work. And that was amazing exposure of, uh, of the impact that he had in, in all places around the world. It was just, just, just amazing. I was, of course, in his house in, in Mill Valley. If, if we were together, had a wonderful time traveling around California. And we were at other places. I, when I saw this picture, I first was hesitating. I could not figure out where were we until I realized that this is Ottawa. Actually, this is my home no, because there is a. No, this is there is, no, no, no. I think. No, no. Sure. Okay. This is sort of yeah, on, right, yeah. on the right hand side. There is the uh, the, the uh, international uh, art center, yeah, art okay. national. Uh, so that's uh, I think as much as I can cover. Oh, where, where did I go? Of course, I wanted to say a few things about Stan Hobbies, but his friends know that well. And so uh, I, I won't waste time, <laughs> time on that. So, uh, Stan, listen, you, 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 it's been such a wonderful trip together. It's, uh, we are always taught to respect our elders. Now you reach the age when you don't have anybody to respect, you know, of course, I believe that age really is not important. I mean, I talked about the 30-year-old man being 90 and thinking back. Age only makes difference, I think, when you cheese. Otherwise, the, it, uh, it's just 90. It's just, it's just a number. And as long as you're going to keep surrounding yourself by these beautiful women like Brigitte, Brigitte, you will be young forever. I hope so. Much love. All the best. Paul, oh, thank you so much. I can't imagine a better brother. Thank you so much. Well, so I think now it's Brigitte's turn to share something, right? She, you have, well, let me first properly introduce you, Brigitte. So, um, Brigitte Groff is a psychologist, psychotherapist, and artist. Since 1986, she has studied and worked with Stan. From her first month long at Esalen to participating in a three-year holotropic breathwork training in Switzerland and eventually facilitating breathwork, um, holotropic breathwork in Europe, as well as facilitating modules and offering trainings in Germany. She currently has a private psychotherapy practice in Wiesbaden, Germany. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly where she offers workshops and retreats. She and Stan have been married since 2016 and they recently launched the Groff Legacy Training for working with holotropic states. So a very formal welcome to Brigitte. And um, I'm very much looking forward to what you're gonna share with us now. Thank you, Susan. Well, I, I, before I start, I would like to say something. I mean, you, you see that these are very private stories and pictures and, uh, I have to say, I have, you know, I'm very excited that we are doing this and also have a little mixed feelings uh, to 
I mean, blow this out in the world. I, I'm a private person, and now suddenly I'm with you know with Stan and quite in the public. So I, I really want to ask you out there um, to treat these informations and pictures with love, care, and respect, and not use them for your own purposes or anything. Just enjoy enjoy that and and be with us with with that attitude we see the comments so we i see that attitude a lot so thank you so much uh to to be respectful with us so okay i'm trying to start right uh, supposed to share the screen there we are okay so um we have decided together, we, we worked on this together to share with you, you know, parts of our life together. And uh, I have to say, speaking of age, I mean, I'm 29 years younger than Stan, but we actually feel we have the same age inside. And with Stan, I've, I've known him for 35 years, he hasn't changed a bit. Uh, it's just the body has more problems, of course, but he's just the same the same person inside and he is still as as funny as wild and as everything as he always was <laughs> so um how do i start oops oh god <laughs> so here we <laughs> this is this was called the child divine child one of my most beautiful psychedelic experiences. This is your painting. First, first uh, mm -hmm. matrix, as I call them, yeah. So now I, it's called, I call it's called Buddha Baby. Buddha Baby, yeah. You will see the reason in a minute. I think there are, <laughs> there's some similarities. So this is Stan, the Buddha Baby, and you will see with his eyes, he, he already had that look, I mean, that he still has today. Uh, this excitement about life and you know so the buddha baby so we have known each other a long time and uh, at 86 i went to esalen i had the, the privilege to come to esalen and there to participate in several month long seminars and this is the the big house where the where these were happening we lived together for a month and there was breath work almost every day and amazing teachers came and mm -hmm. were invited it was like university but much better so here you see recognize Ramdas and uh, Jack Confield yes and Stan <laughs> and this is the the fireplace in the big house mm -hmm. uh, where we actually created and, and developed uh, the holotropic breathwork yes. so this is Stan and Christina leading the workshop there's the fireplace in the big house. This is where two of us together. You created you to the World Tropic Breastfeeder together. Right? Yes. <laughs> this is, I call this uh, picture actually Baby Rick. <laughs> That's uh, Rick, Rick when, when I first met him. He was very young. Too. We were all young. So he was teaching astrology in these uh, month long seminars. I read talk about this, this situation, you know, what, what happened there when we started being interested in astrology and uh, finding the connection with, uh, with uh, LSD, with psychedelics. Mm -hmm. So this is Stan in the middle and, uh, you know, we were doing some exercise with a group and Stan is always in the middle there. I mean, he's not like the teacher sitting on the chair, he's throwing himself into the action. Well, this is Stan, a bit younger. Some of my outfits. <laughs> you see others, you know. Not so serious. This is more folkloristic kind of style. Uh, this is me, a little this bit younger. <laughs> the polka dot lady. <laughs> so this is a uh, Pfeiffer Beach, the beautiful beach near near Esalen in Big Sur. Very beautiful. Beach. Quite amazing, yeah. So then there was a first breathwork training ever was in Breckenridge, Colorado in 87. And it was a gathering of a, a month long training, big group of people who had already a lot of experience with the breathwork. 
So we had 70, 70 people there 70, and it yes. take a whole month there. Yes, yes. Quite amazing, intense uh, train, uh, in training, yes. intensive. Yeah. It's quite uh -huh. well, it's STEM teaching. That was the group. Teaching there and... Uh -huh. And this was, after this, I went into the German speaking three-year training and this is our certification okay. ritual. That we have. This is Stan with that blue shirt. As you have noticed, he likes shirts with patterns, Hawaiian preferably. And then in, uh, in 89, I think it was, uh, Stan asked me if I would like to go to Czechoslovakia and bring Holocaust. I couldn't, I couldn't, of course, go back to, to Prague, to Czechoslovakia. It, he couldn't go back. So he asked me to go and I went with my friend Alexandra from Bülow and with Stan's mom, Maria. And it was a really secret activity and we, we, we stayed with his mom and then we went to the countryside in a little car and the people were, to, you know, came walking with backpacks and so on. And it was a farm which was an enclosed yard. So we, we were working in there. And this was the breathwork room. It was a stable. And uh, you see Stan's, you can see my, my mother in action. Stan's mom in action with the gray pants kneeling on the mattress there. She really started uh, learning, you know. She was, she was great. I mean, it was the people didn't speak any English. So, so we, I had to give the theory and Stan's mom was translating, you know, and she was, I was very afraid if I were doing it right, but she, she approved. It was a wonderful, wonderful group. And uh, I have to show you, this was our music system, <laughs> the red thing. <laughs> But it worked, you know, the, the people had fantastic experiences and it was just, it was so, so much fun to, to be with Stan, Stan and Paul's mom. It was really nice. Was and actually group. some of these people then later became, uh, yes. they came, we allowed them to come to, to, to Esalen, to fix, no, to the to training. Uh, yeah, yeah, to do training mm -hmm. and then they actually became facilitators. Well, two are our teachers now. Yeah, in the yeah, Czech yeah. Republic on the training. And so the, the, you know, the Iron Curtain opened and uh, in 1992, there was actually a big ITA conference in Prague, which was amazing. So here yeah. you see Stan walking through. Uh, we had a huge breathwork. How many people were there? Uh, we had 30, 60 people in this. this 300, was a, 360. 360, yeah. yeah. And this was a, a great uh, gymnasium there. Mm -hmm. And it was very specifically for old, uh, for uh, young uh, communists, you know. <laughs> so it was totally Of course, of course my mother wanted to be in there, wanted to facilitate. There is your mother. <laughs> of course, it's, you know, people cannot do uh, so you think with, if they are not training, of course, what do you do with your mother? You know, <laughs> she wouldn't be stopped. Well, she was a natural. And so you see Stan is, has, with the blue shirt, is leaning over the person. Here, yeah. And uh, Maria, the mother, is you know, holding the person's feet, what we shouldn't do, actually. But, but she was really great and helpful. And people loved her. She did her, her own breathwork workshops later. This was know. one of the largest, the 360. Mm -hmm. We had the, the largest work in... Moscow, which was 460, I think it was yeah. 70 facilitated. Well, so we when we have a big group, it's it's uh, it's divided in small groups with facilitators, so everybody's really covered. They're just like together in the big room for the breathwork, but it's like a like a collection of a lot of small groups in one room. And so in 2000, we visited um, you and I and Rick Turners. We visited uh, Hans Rudi Giger and Carmen Giger in Zurich. With, uh, fantastic uh, visionary artist. <laughs> yeah, I should, when, um, Hans Ruedi, he was, as a child, he was in a, a town called Hur, and they used to have uh, um, annual, annual fairs mm -hmm. where they had things like the shooting uh, uh, galleries, uh, they had the uh, the uh, Maricola uh, and the large uh, um, the wheel anyway. anyway and and one this was most important this was the uh, ghost drive that he very much liked 
and then he created one as a, as a child already in the neighborhood, you know, with all kinds of uh, skulls and, and uh, hanged men and so on. And then when, when he grew up, then he created this in his, in his house. Well, in the garden, going, in the garden. Goes, goes right, was going around uh, his, uh, go, go, and then on, also through the, through the house. Yeah. And so uh, when we came there, he, he took me a ride into this is the this uh, host ride, ghost, ghost, ghost ride, you know, with uh, uh, there are with a lot of fetuses all over the place, and they it's were very par ghost. demonic kind of uh, women, and there was a uh, stuffed uh, um, microphone, oh. Micro Alligator or, or uh, alligator. alligator or, or alligator. Yeah. Okay. So look, look at Stan's face. I mean, he he looks like a happy three-year-old. He was so excited on this ride. <laughs> I think you saw the better in the previous one actually. Yeah? And this is in the house of Hans Rudy, and he's he's actually the whole house was like that with his paintings and the furniture was. Was this is Rick Tarnas, of course, left and, and Rick, here Carmen. is uh, Carmen and Stan and Hans, and Hans, Hans, Hans already at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And this was the uh, furniture, you know, which was all made of, of, of bones and uh, skeletons Snows. and so on. Uh, it was made for uh, June, 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 for the, the film movie. June, that finally was not, was not used, unfortunately. But, uh, amazing kind of so probably you should say that he probably had an lsd session and he went into the perinatal stuff and he got stuck there that's why he was painting all these things right Something like yes that? yes anyway so this was a very rich perinatal art and i became very excited i mean when i when i saw his first uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, Books, you know, because it was such an amazing representation of the of the perinatal experiences that nobody has created anything like that. And mm -hmm. so I finally managed to meet him, and then we became very close yes. friends. This is Carmen also, and uh, I then <laughs> work with him and made a book about him, yes. or two books actually. So. So and in uh, 2015, we had a reunion and uh, actually it was very interesting because I, has, I had planned my dreams journey to go to see the whales and the dolphins in Baja, California. And it turned out that you had had... At that time, I had a, a month of very really powerful, spontaneous experiences mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of uh, related to... Uh, to uh, whales and, and dolphins, and, and the, the sounds were coming spontaneously, and became mm -hmm. very interested. In. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, suddenly we uh, talk on the telephone, and this is you said that yes, that you were just about to, ready to, to go there. So we went there together, and it's in Baja, California. There are the big bays where they have the babies. And uh, you can go in little boats and you just wait. You don't do anything. And uh, the mothers actually bring the babies to the people, to the humans, to the boats. And this is very moving because I mean, human beings have been treated, tre treating whales quite badly, as you know. And you can't feed them, you know. And they, do, they really do this to show their babies. It's just so amazing. Yeah. One big thing was when people were able to to kiss the, the top the, the, the baby. The baby, yeah. So here so is, this the, is the baby this is, uh, coming yeah. to me. Yeah. The I was my hand was before I think it was. Was your hand, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. we don't see it. This the they say when you touch a whale you live ten years longer. That's the same. That's how it worked so far. And this is another adventure we had. Um we were there were these dolphins of course we know this you know is a is a mixed thing because that this is not the ocean this is a, a place where they were taking both of us under the under the 
but it was so beautiful to meet them and uh, and they were so so it was just so moving and then and then they said all right they well they will take you a ride for right underwater one minute and uh, we said well stan is 80 84 but he said sure i'll do that and so this is us under the water with the dolphins the top one is stan and i'm on the left side and this is uh, you know, playing with them. So <laughs> Stan is so cute. He yeah, looks so cute. I don't know which who is looks more cute, the dolphin or Stan. So and then we were feeding them and I had to I had to hold you because you you were floating with this with this vest. He was floating away so I had to I had to hold him. Well, and uh, we like to get married. <laughs> so we've had several weddings so far. The first one was a spiritual wedding in Hawaii in uh, 2016. And we, this was with a kahuna and his wife. A kahuna is a Hawaiian kind of shaman. It's a beautiful ceremony. It's big, big, uh, big, uh, big. Hawaii, the big, big island, big, uh, big island, big island. Yeah. yes, this was with our friends and our friends, the uh, Jack, Horn, Jack, Horn. Jack Hornfield on the right side, and then uh, Betsy and, and Ricky Betsy. on the left side, and also Rick, Rick was there, Rick Turner's and Yvonne, and so actually after us, uh, uh, Jack and, and Rick got married, so mm -hmm. we were in, inspiring, uh, the, you know, for the late happiness. <laughs> so this was That's our formal, one. Yeah. formal wedding in Wiesbaden, Germany in 2016, first of April, which is not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a joke. It has special meaning for us that day. And also it's a, do you say that with a tarot? Carol, yeah, we had, um, if you, if you put down the, uh, the numbers numbers you know of your birth then uh, you get a, a, a card and mm -hmm. most of us got got the uh, emperor mm -hmm. and uh, and the fool joke and the, the, fool. The, fool. The, fool. the fool but so it's the fool's day the first of april but the fool in the tarot is is not a, an idiot or something it's a very powerful card moving with our fears with death and birth and death yeah. yes this was uh, NG Arian to interpret it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and this is my really favorite uh, photograph with Paul. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, he was your, your witness, yes? And my sister was my witness. I love that photo, you're both so beautiful. So much love and connection. So this is another wedding. <laughs> it's obviously not the official wedding in Wiesbaden. Now we are on Easter Island. Um, and and well, we, we ask, you know, that we would like to have a wedding and we asked the sh shaman there. And so we gave some some money that he, you know, bought food and uh, some drinking, drinking. And then they brought uh, people from around, from the village. And uh, they, you know, eat and drink and dance is for, for everybody. It was fantastic. Well, and the ritual. And, <laughs> and, and uh, the shaman was asking me and says, what kind of out, outfit would you like? Would you like a tourist? I said, no, I would like the, the real, uh, real, real, na real native. Real native. And so this is what so I this, ended up. Uh, Stan. And then <laughs> Regina ended up. She got little uh, coconut shells coconuts on her. <laughs> for the bikini. <laughs> and uh, Standing my, my stuff is very, very barely was holding uh, <laughs> together, as you can see. The problem was that it was very, very cold there. I mean, we were scared that Stan would get pneumonia and die from this. this assist. But it was amazing. And they, they gave us this bird in the hand. And it was, it was really amazing. And that was our last spiritual wedding. That was in Peru. That was our so Inca. Very, Inca. very close uh, friends, were facilitators, of course. 
and we have been on several of several of the uh, trips, you know, mm -hmm. all over the, all over the, uh, South, South, America. South America, and so Javier and Paula. So Javier and Paula, they and actually us. decided to get uh, married here, and we joined them also. Yes. And, and there's one. Vicky also. No? The Keros shamans, these two on the left side. They're very little. This woman was super little, and they came from 5,000 meters down to us to make that. The sentence. whole village lived there, you know, the whole the whole year to do this ceremony. It was really very very beautiful. Amazing. So we did a lot of travels and seminars. So the the first one we did was actually we, we went to China together, and uh, usually combine uh, work and uh, travel. tourists. Yeah. yeah. So, so here, our, when our friends saw this kind of okay. possibility, they all thought that, of course, that we should do it. So. There was this, you know, tourist thing where you could get these costumes and get a photo. So Emperor we went, and we went there. Emperors, and, yeah. and, 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 <laughs> and this is here with Rick Tarnas. Rick Tarnas with us. He was there with, with you. You and Rick, you gave the yeah the combining center. combining holotropic breastwork and uh, uh, Arthur. Astrology. Cosmos and Psyche. Cosmos and astrology. You work with the teaching with him, of course. Very, very mm -hmm. Amazing, yeah. yeah. So this was our group. group. And we actually had a funny story in uh, China. The teacher is like a god and, uh, you know, male teacher is a super god. And, and we had to go up to that room. It was a big communist building everything red and gold and there was a big elevator and we had to go up in the second floor and there were all these ladies in the in the elevator and Stan and I and the elevator stopped and they you know they, they didn't want to go before the teacher so they pointed to the door and they said teacher teacher you know and Stan is a is a gentleman from Prague you know from <laughs> from an European uh, educated time and for him it's always ladies first so he said, ladies first. And they said again, you know, teacher, teacher. And he said, ladies first. So this went on for a couple of minutes. Nothing moved, you know, door was closing again. So eventually I said, all right, you please understand he's from Europe, he's ladies first. He will not, he will never leave the elevator. We cannot do the seminar, please go. <laughs> and so they left, so it was really sweet. And then we went to, to Prague together. And this is very beautiful in spring. So this is the famous a, a astrological uh, club. Uh, all, 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 all. Mm -hmm. uh, beautiful. When at the time when uh, when the person was born, you can you can see you can read the mm -hmm. chart, you know, from from this. Mm -hmm. And also every uh, hour they were. Um, yeah, I thought so far moving around and some other mm -hmm. figures, you know, the avarice and, and the skeleton and so it's a very beautiful thing. It's 600 to 600 years. Wow. Well, here you are. You want to say where you are? Yeah, this is, uh, this is the clinic uh, where uh, I was, as a student, you know, I was, I was studying uh, psychiatrist there and I also had my first uh, psychedelic session there. Mm. <laughs> well, this... this is this is our house where we were we born in Prague, where we were uh, uh, so living live. in Prague, where we came to Prague. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the time when it was built, it was one of the most beautiful uh, mm -hmm. buildings there. And this is what happened, you know, a combination with. Uh, is uh, communists and you know are taking care of it and and then also people all around uh, that took chances for the, mm. for the painting there. So. Well, then then we went to Iceland uh, for your eighty fifth birthday, huh? and uh, and this was actually I had I had seen a movie that is called Iceland from Above, like a filmed from a plane, you know, and so I, I decided to give Stan for his 85th birthday the gift of flying with a little airplane over Iceland. And uh, <laughs> You kind of give gifts that uh, 
are really something for me and not necessarily for you. And uh, yes. and also you brought me Wagner for <laughs> Wagner, I gave you, yes. And then this you decided to to take this uh, take around around uh, yes. Iceland and uh, well I'm actually was, at I'm the like, time you were pretty concerned about flying. Yes. Well I'm actually scared of flying and anyway I didn't know how it would be in this small plane if I could stand it and so we went you know to this air in the, there was this airplane it was like size of a mosquito about two seats for us and the pilot in front and we entered that plane and I was sitting behind the pilot and the pilot he was sitting on the seat and suddenly the seat broke down and the seat and the pilot fell into my lap how old is the airplane <laughs> <laughs> so we had to drive back and fix the seat and then I said well maybe this is the last day of, of our life you know let's let's take the chances and actually it turned out to be a very very beautiful experience because because you're not very high you're like really you know you can touch the mountains and and he could also say oh there is some rain let's fly over there I mean there's no there storm around there's and no traffic just choose to go around yeah, it. yeah and it was I really it was got, got very excited about it so amazing amazing color cultures yes. of, the, of uh, the rocks you know yeah it's like the, the 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 rivers are really like arteries it's, a, it's very beautiful <laughs> this was at the guys here standing yeah, trench yes. coat trench coat well, this is us as Vikings. Clowning. <laughs> you look good. <laughs> so we actually we had we had six days of rain and then the last day the sun came out and we could see how beautiful it is there. That was also when we took the flight in the afternoon. And then we went uh, to uh, in 2016 we went to South America, the Atacama Desert. Also a very beautiful place. And we went to Easter Island. Amazing. It's a it's a five hour flight to the left from Chile here. Yeah. It's really out out there in the Pacific and it's yeah, I always Chile. saw, you know, so the line of uh, which are amazing already, but you, mm -hmm. I thought there were maybe you know, 25, 30 of them. And then I was surprised they saw all over the all over this island mm -hmm. and way up anywhere where you know you can't possibly get there with these kind of big pieces of uh, mm -hmm. uh, Very impressive. Yeah. sculptures. Yeah. And then actually Susan organized as uh, this wonderful event for this total solar eclipse in Oregon in August 2017. So we went there and, uh, you know, had a beautiful yeah, gathering and there were shamans and and drumming and here you see my sweetheart. The, the mushrooms around. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very trance on this one. He's having some fun. It was a very, a very powerful and beautiful event, uh, wasn't it? Thank you, Susan, again. <laughs> my pleasure. It was wonderful. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> Of course, and we love to go to Big Sur. This is like our home, and um, it's such a beautiful place, very powerful place too, and very challenging place. Fires and uh, landslides and earthquakes, whatever. But, but it's just, it's just so gorgeous. This is from the Highway One. It's really dangerous there. Yeah. It's dangerous between yeah. the fire and the. Yeah. So this is where yeah. I took this photo of my sweetheart. You know. And the most beautiful, I, I think. And in 2017, uh, 25 years later, from the first conference in Prague, there was mm -hmm. another ITA conference in Prague. And uh, that's where we went. That's the photo we have seen before. Every last wall and uh, Maria. Sorry. And Exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. And we were actually both giving a talk on art, on our art, uh, Stan and I. And so Stan is introducing me for my talk here. And this is Stan giving his talk and you see his painting on the, on the slide. That's nice. 
And there was also exhibition. Exhibition, yeah. yeah with wonderful friends again. Uh, uh, Martina. Martina Hoffmann. Nabona and and uh, Alex Gray. I mean, yeah. Alex Gray on the left right, side. Yeah. Both very famous uh, visionary artists. And this we've seen that too. Paul and, <laughs> Paul and Mary. Marika. Yeah. Yes, and then uh, we went 2018 to Argentina and Peru with Javier and um, Vicky. So this is then teaching. We were always having a lot of fun with these so guys. Wonder, wonderful friends. Wonderful and, friends. Yeah, <laughs> great combination of, of uh, doing work, work. And, and having a lot of fun. They always they always provide everything. So so Stan is happy good food and everything else. So, so we're always in adventure. So it's it's really great and we laugh a lot. So and that was at the end of the group with all the mandalas around. This is the group in yeah, Argentina. It's so nice. It's South America is, people are so sweet. There's just a lot of hugging and kissing and so we, we heard like in Colombia, if you don't hug and kiss strangers, they feel offended. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very, it's if a very... If you meet them for the first, first time, don't give them, a, give them a hug. Don't give them the hand. You have to hug and kiss them. That was still before the before That was the before viruses. COVID, yeah. That's also, for, of course, presenting the problems now that the people should suddenly shouldn't do it. It's so, so against the nature, right? So this was in Peru. Machu. Mm. And we went to Machu Picchu, Machu Picchu yeah. adventure. And this is a beautiful place too, a very powerful place. And there was like the clouds were just coming, lifting up, you know. It's just very magical. And then we were in. Yeah, this was the 27th uh, anniversary of uh, discovery of uh, LSD. LSD in Basel, yeah. So we're. This is Stan. So this is actually our friends who made the books uh, are also organizing this event. So we had a workshop there. We had a big breath work and Sam is giving talk. So this is the crowd. Yes, sir, this, <laughs> These are our friends, yeah. These are the ones who made this uh, Who made book. the book, yes. Book, yes, yeah. yes um, Jutta and Markus uh, Berger from the left side and Roger Wickensdorfer and Chris Heidrich, his wife. Me and Stan, and then we have Christian Reich and Amazing, Claudia, amazing that I know. That I know. Yeah. He botanist. Botanist, yes. yeah. Mm. Yes. And Claudia. Yeah. And here we have Carmen Giger and me and Stan. So at that time, just was this, this great uh, uh, exhibition. exhibition, exhibition. So, mm. so Carmen was taken. We went there. And you know, I mean, this. Paintings. Can you say how how they how he made these paintings? Amazing. Yeah, well, it's very gigantic uh, paintings, mm -hmm. and he was doing it so that he did not know what he wanted to do, and he started had, at the time he had the the brush, the airbrush, the airbrush, you know, and started in the in the upper left uh, thing. corner corner, and he didn't know what was what was happening. What was channeling coming out. It. And then this incredible, symmetrical, uh, symmetrical paintings are, are coming, are coming out of it. Like this one, for instance, amazing. So, and this was, uh, this was actually uh, in May 2018. Paul had been mentioned; had mentioned that it was an honorary PhD that Stan got in CIIS, Institute of Integral Studies. This was, I, I loved it that it was. Uh, specifically for psychedelics, you know? Yeah, you can see here, psychedelic therapy and, and healing arts, honorary PhD. I think it's your fourth honorary PhD, yeah? You have yeah. a couple of others. But it's, it's especially for psychedelics, this one. It's great. And then we, we that was amazing. I mean, you know, after having met at Essel in 86, uh, coming back, uh, being married and leaving a workshop there was just incredible. I mean, I, 
we never would have imagined this would this would happen in life. That's a, such a miracle, and it's actually a combination with our colleagues uh, Will Keepin and Cynthia Briggs, um, and uh, of uh, gender reconciliation and holotropic breathwork. So we were there with Diane Hauf, us is Diane leaving the breathwork, and Will Will and Cynthia the and team of course our teams the gender reconciliation and that's amazing work I mean, and will in thank you do you know great work with with whole talk of breath work, yeah, yeah. Uh, combining it mm -hmm. with uh, you know, psychology mm -hmm. you know and also eco in, eco ecology also in africa and so on yeah, africa and mm -hmm. india and other places I mean, the, the workshop was a little intense because it was actually each method by itself is a full workshop. So that was kind of squeezed into one workshop. That's very, very powerful. It was very the powerful. combination was incredible. Yeah. But gender, you know, gender. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. So it was it was fantastic. And it was actually in the so there's always these Wednesday nights in Huxley in that in that hall. And so it this was the first screening picture ever. Yeah. In of the of the psychonaut film at SLM. That is really very moving. Yeah, and then also in 2018 was when you had the stroke, yeah, in August. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, that changed our life quite a bit. Um, you know, you couldn't get Unfortunately it, it didn't have to happen. This was a really uh, yeah, it was a mistake from the doctors because we had planned a back operation and they took away your blood thinners without mm -hmm. substitute. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, no, I didn't know that you were a danger for stroke. And so that, that really was a medical mistake. And, you know, but we were still lucky and you're not paralyzed and, and your mind is very clear, but it's just the speech that does, you know, that casual conversations work, but you cannot give talks mm -hmm. anymore at all. And so that was actually the, a very hard situation because there was this launch, this big launch with about 750 people. 760 people mm -hmm. for coming, they're coming mm -hmm. for the launch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and this, wanted... was, this was really painful kind of for me. Mm -hmm. I actually managed to write the, the, the talk, you know, mm -hmm. at that point I was already able to work with the, with the uh, computer. computer, you know, but uh, I really couldn't uh, couldn't talk about it because mm -hmm. I was mentioning different languages. Mm -hmm. and so I finally had to ask uh, Rick Tanas to, to read my own. Mm -hmm. That was very hard, that. very hard for you yeah. to, to let that go. I mean, imagine Stan, we would, I would uh, like in Germany or so, I would drive him, there was a weekend theory seminar, two days, and in the car he said, well, what is the topic I'm talking about this weekend and in German, two full days, and it was just, and then he couldn't even read a couple of pages of what he, what he wanted to say, you know, so it's so hard, but you're, you're, you're taking it so well, you're such a sweetheart, you're, you're in good sports, so. So that was the, the psychonaut in, in English. There we go, Susan. <laughs> and this is, we spent some time. This is Susan, oh, of course, coming, and we were working on that. Many, on the film. many, many hours. And I have to say, Susan, you are so amazing. I mean, you you really you really wanted to do everything right and show things right and how Stan is and what he did and and really you just were so much in service you know then quite a few quite a few sessions you did yourself you know mm -hmm. not, not just sort of reading about yes it. and and then also the people who are in the in the movie mm -hmm. you were bringing them uh, an interview you know for for hour and a half mm -hmm. and reading uh, unbelievable unbelievable we believe that you should get phd for that <laughs> for that well film, you know it, you know, I have to say, Brigitte, thank you for those really kind words. But working with you, Stan, was uh, such it gave me such courage to do the really deep work. And probably over the course of the seven years that we've been working together, I had about 17 um, high dose sessions with a variety of different substances. And then 
also breath work, six breath work mm -hmm. sessions. And mm -hmm. that deep work allowed me to change my life in a really dramatic way and, and mm -hmm. see what we're facing um, mm -hmm. a little bit differently with less fear. And, uh, and then Brigitte, your participation in the documentary with in terms of accuracy, your long experience uh, with Stan's approach was also very helpful. So um, anyway, I'll stop talking and let you continue. <laughs> Susan, I also know that you fell in love with the Triantra in the background. Yes, yes. Yeah, I, this it's is, it's uh, my altar. I was in, I was in uh, Tibet and then got it on the, on the way back. Yeah. In, uh, it's very powerful. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and this is this is all painted, also hand painted. Mm -hmm. You know, when when it came, it was like a roll, mm -hmm. yeah. and you can see actually that we're testing the, the uh, painter that we're testing. You know, all the colors on it in the background, yes, so it's not you know it's not some kind of a, a you know, print. print. Yeah, not print. That's not the print. This is a, this. Oh, it, it's beautiful. It it really holds sort of the mystery of of this, you know, divine uh, reality that's possible in the physical dimension. It's, it's amazing. Well, thank you again for everything that you have done here. Mm. So that's what I was, the movie. So, and then uh, we decided we want to go for a private adventure and we have never been to Africa, both of us. So we said, let's go to Africa and uh, you know, also, when we were doing the uh, ITA conferences all over the world, mm -hmm. I always wanted to do one in in, Af in Africa, you know. Mm -hmm. And actually, I was invited in uh, San Francisco with a group of uh, transpersons, uh, black transpersons mm -hmm. and psychologists. Mm -hmm. And then at a certain point, they uh, asked me, you know, Stan, how are you always bringing together between East and West? Mm -hmm. What about North and South? Mm -hmm. And uh, I said at that point, you, you know, this you talk about Hinduism or Buddhism or Taoism, it's very nicely sort of describing. Mm -hmm. But in, in Africa, it seems there are a lot of uh, this tribal. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very difficult to make, make it, uh, you know, very distinct. Uh, Spiritual. Mm -hmm. And uh, they made a big mistake because there was a wonderful mythologist mm -hmm. who said that's not true, you know. Mm -hmm. Know that there is a, also a center mm -hmm. that, that where you have the main archetypes out of which and then mm -hmm. uh, other archetypes are de 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 developed. De developed from it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, I still have a fantasy that sometimes I would like to do the, the one. Uh, Mm -hmm. ITA conference in, in uh, Africa. Well, we'll see. We, we <laughs> fell in Africa, of course. We fell in love with Africa, I have to say. I mean, we, we went to South Africa because it was, you know, sounded more safer and we, we couldn't do the really totally wild stuff because of the stroke. And so we went. <laughs> but the funny thing was that Stan, we didn't know if he could take the ride in his cars because because the roads are, you know, they're not paved and with, my back, yeah. with the back. And uh, of course he would sit with the driver in the front and not up, you know, uh, but, but uh, actually what happened, it was good for his back because, because these, there were these little Losing ripples, <laughs> there were these ripples. So the car was doing like this. So, so you were actually doing great with your back. <laughs> and it was, it was great. The safaris were so amazing. I mean, the animals, it was it was really very very touching to see them. It's it's really a wonderful thing to do. We even got up early in the morning at five o'clock or so. And this was a, there was a this sand, was Samu, this was a sand, sand storm, storm coming. Sand storm. <laughs> so we are equipped. <laughs> <laughs> and then we went to Mauritius to go to the beach. And uh, what happened is that actually. <laughs> We went to a tour over the island and we found out that they have a huge, uh, big Shiva temple there. And there's a whole village actually, Hindu village and, and wonderful, uh, wonderful um, temples and, and sculptures. You know. And to Shiva is stands our archetype. So we ended up in this Shiva temple and we got this uh, signature from the priest, Shiva signature on our foreheads. 
And then I said, well, you know, I heard you can go there and stroke lions. Let's go. And uh, Stan, touching, touching with the different animals there. Stan is actually very adventurous, but he was getting a little hesitant. So I said, so you don't want to go? And uh, so what did you say? Well, I was, I was not worried of being bitten or something, but uh, to be stitched because, uh, because mm -hmm. of uh, my blood, you know. You have blood thinners, so, so he's, a, he's a bleeder, you know. It would be very difficult you know, for me to stop blood, any kind of uh, blood. You know. But so actually uh, nothing happened and I was holding him tight because I didn't want him to fall on the floor. <laughs> I thought then they probably think he's lunch when he's lying on the floor. So, so that was that adventure. And actually this was like a, it was like a big kind of park, but the animals had lots of space. So, so and uh, this was a, 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 a sister and brother rhino, young rhino, and they were orphans. The parents were killed by the criminals for the nose. And, uh, and they had in the morning, you could, you know, visit them and then they were let out in the big wild space and at, at afternoon at four o'clock they come home they come home and they want they want their food and and they put them at night they put the, keep them in these corals you know that they don't get it's stolen. very very uh, soft uh, yes. mouth yeah you can actually <laughs> basically i can never imagine that i can sort of be feeding you know you the, fell in love the, with them you know, yeah because yeah? they were yeah. so sweet so but I, I was glad. Because usually in the in the films when they show, you know, you can see uh, the rhino sort of running like a monster and, and, and shooting, you know. And it's a, it's a very loved, uh, very amazing uh, creatures. Well, I was still happy there was a fence, I have to say. But I didn't mind the fence. And then this is uh, this one of my favorite pictures. Yeah, the thing I never thought I would be able to, to eat, you know, <laughs> to uh, feed. from the mouth of the... Jerry, Jerry. Giraffe. Giraffe, yeah. These are so funny creatures. I mean, they have a blue tongue and you could buy there some food for them and, and they would come and they would like, with their mouth, very gently touch your hand. And they have very special food. cakes there for, for them, you know, that they just love to do. Totally sweet. I, I like Stan's face and the giraffe. <laughs> they look, look at each other. I think that's a funny thing. And then this was, I mean, speaking of being reasonable, that was the, the, probably the most unreasonable thing we've ever done. But it was- I almost lived it dangerously, <laughs> but this was really- This was crazy. Not, as I already mentioned, but, you know- I know. Thinner. I know. Of course, the- uh, Pacemaker, the heart, the pacemaker. Pacemaker. And the stroke. Uh, stroke. <laughs> anyway, so we decided to take chances because- it was 88 at this time. Yes. It was our dream and uh, we went to swim with humpback whales in the Caribbean and uh, actually go swimming with the whales before we were just behind, looking, them, behind them. yeah well and you go out on a on a on a boat with a group 20 people and you stay out in the ocean for one week you don't go back to the land you are like nine ten hours away from the land and from any help from any help of anything so, and, you know, we didn't even know if Stan could walk on that boat, not to speak to get there. They have two small boats where you go out and, with a team and go to, to be with the whales. And we had a, the most wonderful team. They were very respectful and very knowledgeable. And so make sure we're not bothering the animals. And you, you, it's again, it's an area where they have the babies and they rest there until the babies are big enough and then mm. they go. So it's important not to disturb them. And, uh, and they, they, are, they are sort of hanging down on the, on the ground and then they come up to breathe and you, you just wait again. Um, you know, I lived in an Esalen for 14 years. Mm. And so the whales, the gray whales, the gray whales were going back and forth twice. Mm. twice. Uh, but they move very fast, like 20, 20 kilometers, you know, in an hour. So I couldn't imagine when, when people were saying that we're going to go swim with them. Mm -hmm. And this is a trick that very few people know. Then, then uh, there's a certain place where the, the uh, mothers are getting babies mm -hmm. and they hang in there for a while. And at that time when it's happening, they actually, for some reason, had to go down to the bottom the rest for uh, 20 to 30 
minutes. minutes, yeah. And so we have to find out where they are, what the people do in, in that where you, you go there and just find where they are and you wait. wait. And they just sort of, you know, come like a torpedo sort of out between us. And uh, we have very, very close connection with them. Well, that is me. And the whale just came up beyond, under me, you know. I, I wasn't sure if I would be sitting on, on the fin. Of... <laughs> I know you're very careful. You said, you know, you won't, just won't just go <laughs> eat yourself and see what happens. And you don't go next time. And you came back and said, one yeah. came very close he came very close and i said i'm so glad stan you were not there and so we went in the next time and it happened again it just came like Even closer yeah. and i mean these guys have the size of a house and the baby has the size of a garage so you can you can get a little bit of sense of what you're dealing with i mean they are very peaceful but still it's it's a big big animal yeah, very yeah this is stan you yeah, can see again that Muktananda um, ring. That's Sorry, cool. yeah. It's me and, and, yeah. and you and the whale coming up. Uh, anyway, so um, this is about the celebration with our friends. So we visited our friends and celebrated. So this is actually a photo we had with uh, Jack Cornfield, me and Stan, 30 years ago. We were doing all these inside and opening retreats with Vipassana meditation and breathwork in Switzerland. And now this is 30 years later, same guys, <laughs> a little older <laughs> in California. And uh, this, was very beautiful. <laughs> this is Ramdas. We visited him in, in Maui and they also, they always took him swimming. He was totally dependent on help because he had a ba really bad stroke. And he had great friends, you know, who every uh, once and uh, uh, week you know they would take them uh, I think about 20, 20 uh, uh, people away, away you know where there was very shallow shallow the ocean the ocean so and he swimming. had he had a swimming uh, chair kind of thing one, mm -hmm. you know with, with this big uh, wall uh, club, club, arms a big club, club you know mm -hmm. one club and he would come and Sort of go around and and you know play play with those uh, uh, that club mm -hmm. and uh, the babies are coming mm -hmm. people were coming and bringing beautiful flowers and throwing it around and he just sat in the ball there. So this is uh, Sandy and Michael Harner in their house. Where is it? Yeah. Okay. Last last visit. Yeah. This is Rick, Rick Tarnas, first visit with Rick after a long time. I'm mm. very, very, very happy, as you see. And we had a wedding party in California with our friends. It's a Becky. Jack Cornfield at, at, at our friend Betsy's house. Betsy. Oops. This is Michael Harner and uh, our friend Ricky Coddington. This is uh, Jack and Coddington, and Ralph and Metzner. Ralph. And, uh, out there and uh, Rick Tarnas and Kathy Coleman, the <laughs> wife of 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 uh, Ralph. <coughs> Unfortunately, some of these some of these people uh, passed away, <coughs> yeah. even during the movie. Here you see Jack Hornfield, Bo, Legendre, and Ralph and Bo. Metzner. Uh, and Bo Ralph and Metzner Genenda, and yeah. uh, Kathy. This is our friend Betsy with the green. Uh, it's wonderful. So this is the famous toast from the movie, right, Susan? <laughs> it's a toast for our wedding, and Ralph was saying, Ralph, yeah. it's never too late, right? That's what he said. This is Ralph and yeah. Michael Harner. So this is us in Fridjof Kapra and, Fridjof Kapra, and, and Betsy. And <laughs> this is uh, Rick Dobling <coughs> coming to see us in, in uh, Mill Valley. In in our house. Now we come to costume parties. You've seen a little taste from Paul. The halos, the angels. And uh, well, this is, <laughs> this is Stan, of course. 
And we thought in the first party, we said, it's just costume party, what should we wear? And I said, well, you know, most Americans think that Germans are all Bavarians, which we are not. So we dressed up as Bavarians, and I think- I Actually, in one of my LSD sessions, you know, I had the experience <laughs> that I was a Bavarian, Bavarian, and it was like an inn of some kind, and with the Red Landers, the Red Landers, you know, the mm -hmm. uh, swimming, yeah. I mean, um, dancing, dancing, and uh, I had the experience of, of uh, dying and falling on the floor, mm -hmm. you know, the, all this. Uh, okay, here we are. This is uh, Jack Cornfield and his wife Trudy Goodman, and Jack is like uh, is dressed like Gandhi, but he, did, I think, he didn't really look like costume. I, it felt so natural to see him that way. <laughs> so, <laughs> and this is Sandy and Michael Harner. Ralph Metzner Ralph, instead. Yeah. Ralph instead. <laughs> this is us and Betsy. We are penguins, as you can see. This is Susan. Susan. <laughs> you were like with one of us. What are you, a bumblebee or what is this called? A bumblebee, yes. Bumblebee. Um, I think you look very it suits you very well. You <laughs> should wear this more often. <laughs> This is us with uh, Rick and Yvonne, Rick Turner's and Yvonne, his wife. This was Noah's. Uh, yeah. Oh, this was the party was called Noah's Ark. Noah's, Noah's Garden. Ark. So or we animals, were we animals. were all animals on the on Noah's Ark. That was the Noah's Ark. Now we had a theme. Yeah, we switched to themes. So this was Stan and Paul. You came a uh, visit after the stroke. A visit with Stan. This is and Rick, yeah. and Rick Tarnas. You were watching. You were watching some talks in the valley in the house. See, Paul, I really think this was the visit in California. Somebody wrote in the chat. It was Green Bay. We were there. We were there. I, I think that photo was from there. See, this is in Green Bay. I'm, I'm sure. Pretty sure it's not Ottawa. We were no, I going think to the, the bank. stroke. I think it's in the valley. Yeah. yeah. So again, no, the, the brothers, here they are. Well, and then, you know, the COVID started and we had to change our adventures a little bit to our home in Germany. So this is us in the, in the COVID mode with our masks. And we used that time to launch our new training, the Growth Legacy Training for working with holotropic states of consciousness. We launched that last year in May. And here we are signing certificates for our teachers. We actually several, uh, several days ago, we got our first uh, we, certificates from, we got from South the, America. Yeah, the first certified people in South America. So this was our, you know, <laughs> our adventure in the garden. <laughs> not quite swimming with whales. <laughs> swimming with, this is not swimming with whales. This is for Stan's birthday last year. And this is you. I love mushrooms, of course. Stan is hunting for mushrooms. We were a bit late, so we found one. <laughs> well, we ate it with eggs, so. So I have a couple of photos of my beautiful sweetheart I want to share with you again here. <laughs> you see him. He was already beautiful as a baby, very excited about life and curious. This is another beautiful one. This is in it's Big Sur. This place again in uh, Nepenthe in Big Sur. This is a, 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 a drift Phoenix again. It's made of Phoenix. driftwood from, from the ocean. So this, you said I should show that you're also a funny person, not just a serious scientist. So here's the proof you are a funny person. <laughs> <laughs> For those who haven't known that so far. And here again, this is what Paul also mentioned. This. Uh, Everybody who knows Stan is, uh, knows that he loves food. So this is a special, special treat of lobster in Greece. So this is, you, if you- This you, was my major conflict, which was <laughs> finishing this incredible uh, lobster going and see the, the moon. And, uh, we moon, wanted moon. to go up to a place and watch the sunset and the moon rising and that it was getting into conflict with the lobster, you know, mm -hmm. and so, so we couldn't go see the sunset. I mean, the lobster was winning. So <laughs> this is in Peru. 
Uh, you mean for the chair monitor? Okay. This is nobody believes that it's me. Yeah? That you were painted for the wedding. Mm -hmm. Easter yes. Island, yeah. Toots you well. I mean, you look like a natural with this. You should wear this more often too. <laughs> that was a China picture, beautiful one. And this is actually somebody gave gave you that T-shirt long time ago. So I I love the T-shirt. It says Stan Stan is love. Stan is love. So it's actually <laughs> Stan is love. Stan is love, and your name is Stan is love. So that's the that's the play of words on that T-shirt. And it's true. You are love. Mm. You are love. So I think this T-shirt is very right. Again, my favorite. Right, so, so happy birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday. And again, I still cannot get over this, uh, <laughs> this you know, Paul and uh, and uh, Brigitte, you know, grown this. This is, you, are, you love this book. <laughs> He's just in love with this book, so. <laughs> so I'm lucky now, I'm really, very happy to go and uh, be able to read in it. Mm -hmm. I haven't really, really touched very much of it. Mm. Well, well, well again, thank you so much for your patience. This has been a long, a long ride, and I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, you, you, I hope you like to celebrate birthday with us. Thank you for thank you for watching. Thank you for joining, and thank you so much for Paul for being being so wonderful and uh, thank you for supporting the book as it's been without you we couldn't have done it and this is so amazing and thank you susan for everything you've done and pulling this together every month and and thank you so much jim for for making that that possible and 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 rick rick uh, for the technology and thank you so much everybody thank you so much Thank you, Brigitte. What a beautiful mm -hmm. sharing. Um, so many memories, so many lovely things to mm -hmm. think about and, and reflect on. Um, it's been, and happy birthday, Stan. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. Shall we sing? <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Stan. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Good. Thank Bye. you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Stan. And Jim, Jim, once more, you know, all you have done, you know, from the first major, major, uh, places in San Francisco, <laughs> you know, the, and uh, now what you are doing all over the world, it's, it's amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's been an honor. And of course, that's, that's what, what you have now uh, done for me in mm -hmm. this six months, you know, it's mm -hmm. just incredible <laughs> to be able to, for me to see, you know, a lot of my uh, great friends uh, whom I met all over the time and all over the world. Mm. Yeah. Susan, do you want to say anything just to wrap up as the really the convener of this? Well, a huge thank you again, Jim. And, and Stan, these past six um, sessions leading up to your birthday, I was so impressed with the people that have come into your life during the 60 years of your career and the things that was inspired were inspired as a result of your exchanges and collaborations and the gift that you gave humanity not just through your work with holotropic states and your exploration of, of psychedelics as a means for accessing them and also breath work but the space you created at Esalen that allowed people to deeply um, explore and share their ideas in an environment where they weren't judged or shut down mm -hmm. because they were outside of the existing paradigm. 
so, you know, it's just a tremendous gift you've given the world. And I have been so blessed to have had this direct interaction with you. And in telling your story, I just learned so much more. And Jim, it's just been an amazing opportunity to watch Stan interact with these visionaries over the course of these sessions. And that's why I invite everybody to go to the way of the psychonaut.com and click on the links to watch these past sessions that are part of Humanity Rising's offerings into the 200 sessions, I think. All of the numbers are in the 200s. This is how many days this has been going on. So anyway, many, many thanks to you, Jim, and especially to you, Stan and Brigitte. I, I have so much love and gratitude to you all. And of course, Paul yeah. was wonderful. <laughs> Estelin was real, real paradise, you know. Normally we had to go to conferences somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, and sit there and, and uh, uh, be careful what we can say and so on. Whereas here we were all saying in the big house, you know, with the big uh, pillows and so on. And people said what they wanted to say. We really knew what it, what was happening. And then when it finished, we went all you know in the in the in the bus, bus naked, sit in the bus you know, naked. <laughs> then continued talking about the, the transpersonal psychology. Um. Yeah. Yeah, it, was, uh, it brought back memories of what we called hot tub diplomacy. <laughs> yeah. You strip people down to their knickers, man, and put them in a hot tub and all kinds of wonderful things begin to happen. <laughs> so, well, uh, Stan, Brigida, uh, Susan, Paul, uh, thank you all so much. Um, and you know what's coming to me, uh, uh, Stan, uh, is a term from... Paul Tillich, uh, the theologian in the 1950s and the 1960s, who said that, you know, the basic category of the authentic life is to have the courage to be. And, you know, Paul, when you were uh, showing the uh, pictures and telling the stories of your boyhood uh, together and, and Brigitte, as you were showing the pictures and telling the story of the more recent uh, uh, decades, um, Stan, your authenticity has been fiercely present uh, from those first photos of when you were a baby. Uh, and I think that's given us a lesson, everyone, uh, that uh, to be truly authentic in who we are destined to be you have to have the courage to be. You have to uh, be willing to question authority as Stan did in the face of the uh, police and the communist regime back in the uh, uh, communist days in, in Czechoslovakia. You have to have the courage to take LSD um, when there was so much controversy and delve into it with all your might and main to explore that frontier. You have to have the courage to be when they make LSD illegal. And most of the researchers went home, but not Stan. He developed a holotropic breathwork that attained those states of altered consciousness by other means. And every step along the way, uh, there has been uh, a embodiment, I would say, Stan, uh, of uh, a courage that uh, has enabled you to stay for 60 years on the frontiers of consciousness. And that's why I think the ultimate accolade for your life is that you've personified the voyage of a psychonaut into the furthest reaches of the depth of who we are as human. And I would just add, you know, the way you and Brigida love each other is it just so fiercely authentic uh, that it is inspiring all of us. So I, I just want to honor you. I, I love you. I love you both. Uh, Susan, I'm in awe of your capacity to just put it all together uh, month after month. 
uh, and uh, what we've what we're seeing in this life is everything we all need to be to save humanity from itself mm -hmm. during this critical hour. Mm -hmm. And so uh, thank you, Stan. Uh, it's been an honor and a privilege to salute you on your 90th. You it's amazing in the 1960s, you know, so many wonderful people. And of course the whole thing was not, individuals but we were really working together mm. in the all the amazing conferences and so on all over yeah. the world and uh, yeah. and extending our books and uh, you know <laughs> experiences and so on uh, this was just amazing amazing time yeah. i remember all i've read most of stan's books and i would wait for his next book to give me counsel as to how to think about the future and uh, that's, that's a tribute to your persistent innovation and uh, creativity. Uh, so thank you. All right, everyone. Um, thank uh, you all. We've gone uh, a full Great. two hours today. This has been a wonderful celebration on July 1, uh, 2021, the 90th birthday of Stan Groff. Bye, everyone. We'll Thank see you, you again Thank tomorrow you, Jim. on Humanity Rising. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. Happy birthday. Bye.